Hi, so today I am reading a story called The Other Side by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrations by E.B. Lewis. And this is a story about a friendship. Let's just see. Um, so an unforgettable story of the power of friendship. Um, some people say manages to plumb great depths with understand simplicity. What a great metaphor Woodson has created for knocking down old beliefs and barriers that kept people apart, which you will learn exactly what that statement is about. So this again is a story about a friendship. Um, kind of, it's like in a way it's beating the norm. They're changing the norm in this story. So the other side. So I'll go ahead and read the author's note because this will help. Years ago, when I began to tell the story of Clover and Annie, I had no idea about the life this book would take on. I knew two things. One, that I wanted this to be a story about the way in which young people change the world each day through their seemingly simple acts of resistance. And two, that I want it to be a lyrical story that brought with the telling hope. I needed that hope. By the time I sat down and began to tell the story, I traveled all over the country and to many places outside the country as well. As I began to really see the world, I realized that so much of it was still segregated despite the work of Martin Luther King Jr. and the civil rights movement. Always I would say, what about right here in this classroom? And slowly the young people would begin to look around and notice perhaps for the first time, that there is still work to do. And there is still work to do. People often ask me if I think the fence is down. Down, no, lower, definitely. In the years since The Other Side was published, the world has changed. Our country elected its first president of color. This was hard to imagine even 10 years ago, but we imagined it and it happened. Just as Clover and Annie imagined a fenceless world. Each time I pick up the other side and begin reading it to young people, I see in their faces their own eagerness to knock down the fences in their lives. And I am filled with such an amazing sense of hope and pride. Who knows what their worlds will be like when the other side turns 20, 30, 50. Imagine. So that's a great little author's note. So let's begin. The summer of the fence that stretched through our town seemed bigger. We lived in a yellow house on one side of it. White people lived on the other side. And mama said, don't climb over that fence when you play. She said it wasn't safe. So there's their house. That summer, there was a girl who wore a pink sweater. Each morning, she climbed up on the fence and stared over at our side. Sometimes I stared back. She never sat on that fence with anybody. That girl didn't. So there, and then you can see the girl with the pink sweater. Once when we were jumping rope, she asked if she could play. And my friend Sandra said no without even asking the rest of us. I don't know what I would have said. Maybe yes, maybe no. So there, there they are jumping rope and there she is on the fence. That summer, everyone and everything on the other side of that fence seems far away. When I asked mama why, she said, because that's the way things have always been. Sometimes when me and mama went into town, I saw that girl with her mama. She looked sad sometimes, that girl did. Don't stare, Mama said. It's not polite. So there she is, her mom and her, and then the girl from the fence. It rained a lot that summer. On rainy days, that girl sat on the fence in a raincoat. She let herself get all wet and acted like she didn't even care. Sometimes I saw her dancing around in the puddles, splashing and laughing. Mama wouldn't let me go out in the rain. That's why I bought you rainy day toys, Mama said. You stay inside here where it's warm and safe and dry. 
but every time it rains, I looked for that girl and I always found her somewhere near the fence. Just looking out the window. Someplace in the middle of the summer, the rain stopped. When I walked outside, the grass was damp and the sun was already high up in the sky. And I stood there with my hands up in the air. I felt brave that day. I felt free. Here she is, feeling free. I got close to the fence and that girl asked me my name. Clover, I said. My name's Annie, she said. Annie Paul. I live I live over yonder, she said. By where you see the laundry, that's my that's my blouse hanging on the line. She smiled. Uh, she smiled then. She had a pretty smile. So now they are talking. But again, separated by that fence. And then I smiled, and we stood there looking at each other, smiling. It's nice up on this fence, Annie said. You can see all over. I ran my hand along the fence. I reached up and touched the top of it. A fence like this was made for sitting on, Annie said. She looked at me sideways. And my mama says I shouldn't go on the other side, I said. My mama says the same thing, but she never said nothing about sitting on it. Neither did mine. Ooh, they found the loophole. That summer, me and Annie sat together on that fence. And when Sandra and them looked at me funny, I just made believe I didn't care. Some mornings, my mama watched us. I waited for her to tell me to get down from that fence before I break my neck or something, but she never did. I see you made a new friend, she said one morning, and I nodded and mama smiled. That summer, me and Annie sat on that fence and watched the whole wide world around us. There they are. One day, Sandra and them were jumping rope near the fence, and we asked if we could play. I don't care, Sandra said. And when we jumped, Sandra and me were partners the way we used to be. So now they're all playing together. When we were too tired to jump anymore, we sat up on the fence, all of us in a long line. Someday, somebody's going to come along and knock this old fence down, Annie said. And I nodded, yeah, I said, someday. And there they all are. And that is the end of the other side. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And um, yeah, have a good one. Until next time. Bye.